fans, bell has rung. We are underway. Introductions out of the way. This is our main event for this evening. Two world-class superstars, no pun intended here. Oh, world, no, it very much is pun intended. World traveled and world acknowledged. MVP, the champion right there. Chavo Guerrero, Guerrero Jr. in the foreground as well. They are known by every single person in this audience today. The world-class heavyweight championship on the line between them. And not only that, but whoever wins, they have promised that whoever wins, the other one will serve them a beer. Yeah, and it seems like this crowd is not really favoring one over the other. No, they recognize both of these men's athleticism and both of their reputations. This is going to be a very evenly split match as the amount of respect that, that not just the fans here in El Dorado, but really the fans around the world have for both of these gentlemen uh, is very apparent here as Chavo now uh, temporarily refusing the handshake as he wants to once again see if he can get all the fans on his side. And he does get a good ovation here, but uh, MVP going to step up and say, let's see if he'll come to me too. And it's just about the same. I really... It's very, very evenly split between the two. So neither one of them necessarily going to be able to count on the uh, what we sometimes call as the invisible man. Uh, That's the, the third man. Is it the well, okay. That's the, That's third, the third man. man. The third man is the referee. It's the third. Okay, fine. Then we'll say the fourth man. You can also reference football with it being the twelfth man. You can also represent basketball with it being the sixth so, man. I can keep going if you want to, but you know what? How about we just get to calling the action as it gets underway here between Chavo and MVP. All right, we got the handshake between the two of them. This looks to be a clean scientific match underway as both of these men looking for that initial lockup, looking to grab the opportunity. Half of a collar and elbow there. Oh, you can see uh, MVP almost trying to shoot the half going back to the amateur style as Guerrero too close to the ropes. MVP steps back and waits for Chavo to come to him. Now it looks like they're just going to do a test of strength here, it looks yep. like. Yep, let's see where we go from here. Break there by MVP who, initially, who immediately puts Chavo Guerrero into the hammerlock position. Guerrero with a lucha roll to get out of that. And, oh, look, maybe, no, he's twisting it around. I thought maybe he's going to try for an arm drag. But MVP maintaining the standing wrist lock. Another good roll through there. Oh, good. Good move right there. A lot, of that, a lot of that Lucha-style training you can see coming into effect there to break that hold and give Chavo the advantage as he takes MVP down and applies an overhand wrist lock of his own. Well, it's like we mentioned earlier as they were making their way out here. Chavo, of course, the, the legacy speaks for itself. The Guerrero family legacy dates back to, like you said, Chavo, Mondo, Hector, the late Eddie, and now Chavo Jr. here. I mean, there's no go without saying that the Guerreros are well-known in professional wrestling. And MVP knows that. But like I said, MVP himself, not unfamiliar with combat sports. A guy who is a regular jiu-jitsu practitioner. He has wrestled all over the world. He's a former champion over in New Japan as well. This guy, he's virtually done anything and everything you can think of from WWE to New Japan and all over the world. That's what I'm saying. This is more so of an evenly contested matchup skill-wise and legacy-wise, if you will. MVP right now with control of the match with the leg scissors, keeping Chavo Guerrero on the mat. Referee having to be very, very cautious there to watch the shoulders. Of course, the right shoulder firmly up and now both the left shoulder as well. Chavo trying to extricate himself from those legs. He's got out of it there with a nice flip and both men back to a neutral position. The kip up out of the headlock there with the legs is very well applied. And you can see that both men, again this is, even though usually we use this term for gentlemen that have never faced each other in the ring or rarely faced each other in the ring, you can tell this is kind of a feeling out procedure. They they recently competed against each other. They kind of know what's generally in each other's bag of tricks. Mm -hmm. And now they're being, they're cautiously coming into this match, but certainly with a large amount of respect. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with a little feeling out process. Even with an opponent that you're familiar with, guess what? That opponent could have gained something new while you stepped away. So you still need to take that little bit of time just to see, and as you said, feel out the opponent. See how far they've come and see what they're bringing to the table. MVP with the side headlock, taking it straight over and putting Chavo down. Referee needs to get in there and check those shoulders. Clearly one's down. You can hear MVP yell at the referee, count. And Chavo just barely. Yeah, just barely there. 
And um, a bit of a, a harsh um, response there from MVP, but Chavo comes back though with a nice leg lock of his own, hooking the head in of MVP, who was trying to escape there with a kip up of his own, unsuccessful. Yeah, there. this is reversing the situation that we saw earlier with uh, Chavo being in within the head scissors of MVP, and MVP struggling to try and uh, take himself out of this. The leg muscles of Chavo Guerrero, of course, the Guerrero is well known for a lot of, besides the lucha style wrestling, but also a lot of the high flying maneuvers. Chavo using the hub of frog splash. Oh, look at this. The athleticism there. Oh, yeah. okay. oh, okay. Here we go. We saw this last yeah, time. Yeah, we did. We saw this in their previous confrontation. There is, there is respect, but there is also uh, the rivalry as Chavo <laughs> rolls through as well and says, fine. I can do that There's too. Plenty left with me to go, and Chavo now to the outside. He's uh, out of camera shot right now, so I'm not sure where he's going and uh, where he's, oh, he's going into the crowd. And oh, taking a oh, seat. Wow. Oh, wow. Uh, and usually, usually wrestlers do this in the front seat, but uh, you know, we're, we're almost sold out here in El Dorado. There aren't any front seat chairs available. So Chavo just taking a little bit of a break amongst the fans. Now let's and, let's let's make something clear here so that the people that are unfamiliar with what just happened there, MVP you saw took a little bit of a lounge break on the top rope. Chavo went out into the audience, merely as to say, is that all you have? Because I'm watching something that I can sit out here and be entertained by as opposed to wrestling with you. That was definitely more of an insult towards MVP, not something that's too flattering. I'm sure MVP will retaliate retaliate for that. All right, Chavo now back in the ring and immediately MVP cinches the side headlock to pace the match now, picking up. Shoulder tackle puts oh, Chavo wow. down. Wow, puts Chavo all the way across the ring. And the look on MVP's face says, I think it's time to get serious. You want this championship, you got to come take it from me. Well, to be fair, MVP was the one that started the show voting there a little bit, so Chavo just responded in kindly, but now, okay. I think this is actually going to be more of a psychological game at this moment here. Maybe Chavo is just trying to get under MVP's skin because we know if you can throw somebody off mentally, you can beat them physically. And we know that Chavo Guerrero had one of the greatest tutors for mental games in the form of his uncle Eddie Guerrero. Oh, you lie. Was a no, you I, lie. I don't lie. Eddie and Chavo learned to lie, cheat, and steal. Oh. And I know that Chavo still loves to pull those, uh, those type of practices when he can. It's a family tradition. Of course it is. Chavo with the leapfrog over there. Shoulder tackle puts MVP down. And look at that, just kind of responding <laughs> in time. Look at that. Indeed. Chavo says, come on, I can do it. I can do anything you can do. And I can probably do a little bit more. And I know that MVP is thinking the same thing. Well, you know, Chavo looks to be in great condition. He has spent a lot of excess time working not only with the GLOW audience, but as you can see, the only thing that is hindering Chavo at the moment seemingly is that right arm or elbow as we see there. He's got the brace on it for protection. But overall, Chavo not in bad shape whatsoever for this contest with MVP. Uh, both of these men stepping in here in as in top physical condition as they can be, but as you pointed out, that right arm in the brace from uh, presumably from another match, uh, an injury in another match, and MVP though, not focusing on it, instead choosing to go after the ankle, again wanting to negate the high-flying maneuvers and the aerial ability of Chavo Guerrero. Almost a submission type maneuver here. Yeah, look, look if at that. He would turn Chavo over. over. Look at MVP his left foot. Look where he has it positioned. Yeah. That is definitely a great maneuver on the part of MVP, but it really is surprising to me that he isn't attacking that right arm. Most wrestlers will tell you if they can see an obvious bullseye, they'll take it. So it does surprise me that it seems like MVP is focusing more on the lower body parts of Chavo Guerrero. Oh, uh, now he turns Chavo over, going to drop him down straight knee first. And that is going to cause a serious problem for Chavo Guerrero, because if those knees are taken out from underneath him, then he can't climb to that top rope, he can't use that frog splash, and he's gonna have any and he's gonna have difficulty even picking MVP up for any type of power moves. Do you think this is wise MVP of MVP with no problem picking up Chavo though? Well, like I was saying, do you think this is wise of MVP to go after the legs as opposed to that injured arm? I don't think it seems to be working for him right now. We'll see if it pays off in the long run. I think MVP looking to go to the court right in first. Early, but no, Chavo. Chavo has that well scouted, and Chavo going to take the opportunity to step outside and try to recuperate just a little bit. 
from the damage done to that left knee. Definitely trying to get some feeling back in that knee and a little bit of a recovery time, but this is also giving MVP a rest period as well. Oh, MVP on the inside, Chavo. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Over the top to the downside, fans. We got to step away. We're actually, when we come back. All right, fans, we're back here. Action now on the outside as MVP not allowing Chavo Guerrero to rest up and to try and gain any type of, of, of uh, recuperation in that knee. Throws Chavo back in, hooks the leg with a bad leg, but uh, MVP unable with three different pin attempts there to keep the challenger down. Again, this is for the World Class Heavyweight Championship. This is our main event. A rematch from a couple of weeks ago with the combined world-class River City Wrestling show and MVP now in control of this match. He has Chavo Guerrero in the sleeper hold and he's got Chavo down. Can Chavo get the vertical base underneath him and get this hold broken? We can hear the fans getting behind Chavo here. It seemingly may, may be in the corner now of Chavo instead of MVP. Well, the fans were very evenly split, but it does seem now that they are much more vocal for Chavo. Oh, look at that beautiful wow. move by MVP is again, the target of that knee at any given time. MVP knows he can go back to that knee, take it out from underneath him, Quick and reaction. then work over it. And now just without hardly any effort, just pulling down and draping it over that bottom rope. Those are steel cables, fans. It's not not rope, it is steel. We just call it rope because traditionally it used to be. But you take your leg and you wrap it around a quarter post or you wrap it around one of those steel cables, it is going to cause serious damage. Chavo now on the outside. You heard, you heard MVP there. Ah, see, there you go. I guess we just got a little bit of insight as to why MVP was working over the leg. You're keeping him from the top rope. Keeping him from applying, or I'm not applying, but from hitting the frog splash. I brought up that possibility earlier, and apparently I was correct. And you pointed it out very nicely there, Travis. MVP, well scouted with Chavo Guerrero's move set, and knows that he loves to finish, finish people off with that frog splash in honor of his late uncle Eddie Guerrero. MVP wants that not to happen as he has Chavo positioned in the corner. Is he looking to aim by for that drive-by kick that we've seen? Here comes Chavo, but nobody home. Looks to be MVP, but nobody home. Chavo out of the way. MVP hook, hooked up in the one corner. Chavo in another one. Oh, but Chavo, no. Chavo can't even Here we go. build up speed, but he is going to try to make some strikes with 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 that bad leg. Turn about his fair play, and, and if you can look, you look closely there at the right leg of MVP. It looks like the MVP himself has a bit of a brace on that right leg, so that may be now the focal point of Chavo Guerrero. Like I said, turnabout is very much fair play. This match is so evenly contested. Both of these men so familiar with each other, and Chavo Guerrero Jr now going to work on that left knee and left leg. And I want to bring up something that, and that burn, by the way, that's his right leg. Excuse that's me. Him. Yeah, you're right. But I want to, thank you. I'm glad you actually admit that. Every once in a while, I have to. Now, getting back to what I was saying there, we were talking about the effects of Chavo's leg being damaged by MVP earlier, not being able to utilize the frog splash. Think about the effects that this has on MVP. Remember, he went for that drive-by kick that missed, and it's caused Chavo to start going to work. If you take out the legs of MVP, you eliminate that drive-by kick, and you actually take out his finish, the playmaker, as well. MVP desperately grabbing for the ropes, but how much damage has been done? Chavo slightly hobbled, but MVP struggling to get to his feet, and as soon as he does, Chavo immediately goes back to work on the right leg, but MVP now firing back. Couple of forearm shots, drives Chavo into the corner, and MVP now going to go. Irish whip sends Chavo careening off, swings but misses with the front, with the fist. Oh, nobody got caught with the spinning tilt to whirl into the head scissors takedown. And, and Chavo's going outside. Is he going to try to go upstairs with the bad wheel? Nope, nope, nope. Okay. That doesn't require climbing anything. That's just your upper body strength. Hooks the leg for the pinfall, and MVP out before the two count really fully connects. Chavo definitely realizes that he's not in the best of positions with oh. that leg, but he is definitely one that can adapt to his surroundings. Chavo now with a kick to the midsection. Is he going to try to set up for the oh. three amigos? Yes, we're going to go visit some buddies here. We got one. Swing of the hips. But you know, Chavo to take over. Going to try for the second. Yeah, you don't want to meet just one friend. You want to meet two if you oh, can. Look at MVP immediately going to the rope to prevent that from happening. And Chavo 
taking advantage of that opportunity, just some clubbing forearms across the back and shoulder blades of MVP. Chara definitely trying to gain the advantage here. Isn't tell, but a reverse Irish whip. Well, again, trying for the big boot. There he goes. Oh, wow. But it dealt with the damage. He connected with it, but the damage done to MVP's knee means that that move did just about as much pain into uh, Chavo Guerrero as it did for MVP. And I don't know if that's wise at this point in tenure into the matchup, if MVP should have used that kick or maybe he should have thought of a clothesline instead. Something other than utilizing that already injured right leg. And that's the problem with having some of these moves that you rely on instinctually. You go for them without feeling the pain because the adrenaline is surging through you. And then when you connect, you're reminded that that hurts and you really shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. Both men now trading blows back and forth in the middle of the ring. It's breaking down in El Dorado here. And Chavo Guerrero in the in the advantageous position. Nope, MVP making me a liar right there as he pushes them, or Chavo into the corner. Irish whip, corner to corner. MVP going to charge in, but is greeted by the boot as Chavo up to the second rope. Can he fly off? He flies straight into the arms. Oh, wow, look at the impressive. And straight down, world's strongest slam style. And MVP goes for the pinfall. Chavo with a kick out and grabbing for the ropes at the same time. Either way, he's fine for it. MVP, though, feels like it's about time. Oh, is yeah. he going to go to the courts right here? I think he is. is. Oh, no, he can't do it. He can't, he can't position it too well, but he's going to oh, it anyway. And he connects with it. He couldn't build up the speed for it, but he still managed to connect with the elbow. But he could not pin Chavo Guerrero for three. I'm thinking that as, as minor of a minor detail as that may have been, usually we see MVP run up for that elbow drop. And unfortunately, he was not able to get enough speed behind him there, so that may have given Chavo enough time. Oh, he's going to try for the playmaker. You said this movie may be out of the gameplay, but he, well, he couldn't pull it off. Chavo reverses. Here he hits with that one suplex. Oh, he's spinning around now. We know what's coming as he's looking to visit the second friend now. Two suplexes connected. Can he go? Can he complete the three amigos? The hat trick is on the way if he can hit it. Picks him up, takes him over. He connected all three. At this point, Chavo Guerrero still favoring that left knee. It almost buckled. It almost gave underneath Chavo. But that. looking to go to the top rope to try to connect with the frog splash. If he hits this, it could well be it. And you see the hesitation as he knows he has got to rely on that right knee more than the left one. Chavo, Chavo trying to get himself in position, but just too slow. The damage has just been too much for Chavo Guerrero Jr. to make it all the way to the top on his own. And MVP now looking for the superplex to bring Chavo back into the ring. Neither of these men in a favorable position. This is going to be severely hurtful for one of, or both of these men, yeah, actually. Both of these men working with bad wheels. Uh, they're both trying to fight each other off in the second rope position. Chavo really needing to do it more so than MVP as Chavo... Chavo looking to be dragged up to the top rope here. Oh, Chavo slips back down to the second. Again, negating the opportunity. Chavo with the clubbing forearms. He'll try to shove MVP off here. And he does just that. Now look at Chavo. It looks like Chavo he's going to try for it. In the top rope. He comes off cross body style. But he rolls through with it. He couldn't keep MVP pinned down with it. Chavo runs in, but he's greeted with a boot. A win is he looking for the playmaker? Up oh, again. Fails with it. MVP down. Chavo over. Schoolboy style. Oh. No, he but picked the leg there. He's got both legs negated. He's got MVP in the ropes. MVP actually went to utilizing some of that jiu-jitsu technique that he's very familiar with. Chavo, he attempted to pick the leg and roll MVP up. MVP, sensing he was in danger, started to apply or get stuck into a guard position there, which prevented Chavo from making any kind of good, secure pinfall maneuver. Forearm strike by, uh, by Chavo, but uh, MVP with the Irish whip. Oh, MVP slides between the rope, or Chavo slides between MVP's legs. MVP again trying to block this. I'm going and the leverage now, but it oh, no, again, no. oh, just a two, just a two. And Chavo now going to go back to work on that leg. He's going to try to soften this leg up once again. Oh, yeah, he is. He's oh, going to turn it over to a single leg Boston Crab. This is a submission hold. And it's been working on that leg, that right leg of MVP In now. A play, if, if MVP knows the way that Chavo has his body position when we get back to the wide camera shot, 
He's twisting that knee, applying incredible torque, and this is causing him pain in the back, but also in the... Oh, wait a minute! Oh, he submitted! The champion just submitted the title! Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner and the new world-class heavyweight champion, Chavo!